Mundigak is a site that existed before Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. Oisha? Who comes up with all this stuff? The pillared hall called the palace head very much like the priest king of Mohenjo-daro. Mundigaks. Mundi. Mohenjo-daro makes you feel mad in your head of What's hijack my video? Excellent pottery and a mass burial city having been burnt down. Hello, hello and welcome to episode 17 of Eyeshadow and Itihas. I am Ruchika Sharma and I teach history for a living. I have a few more credentials that have been listed in the description box. Eyeshadow and Itihas is a passion project where in every episode I bring in a topic of Itihas, which is history. And I discuss that particular topic while I do this eyeshadow look, eye makeup look. I make a look like this one. Please note that there is a list of sources listed in the description box that you can go ahead and use to read about today's topic or to fact check everything that I will be blabbering in the video. Now that all that is sorted, I cannot wait to introduce you to today's topic. Today we will talk about Mundigak. Yep, Mundigak is a site that existed before Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. No, not that. Oisha? Who comes up with all this stuff? Anyway, what a catastrophe this movie was. Moving on. Mundigak has had some fabulous and fragile finds, such as the pillared hall called the palace, sculpted head very much like the priest king of Mohenjo-daro, some excellent pottery with decorations in black paint, such as the people leaf pottery, and a mass burial, which possibly points to the city having been burnt down. So we're going to start with briefly discussing what is Mundigak, and then move on to discuss these four amazing finds. All of this while I do this orangish, orangish, why I do this orangish autumnal look? Shall I appear? So, what is Mundigak? Mundigak is located in southern Afghanistan and is a Bronze Age and earlier site. The site was occupied from about 3500 to 2400 BCE, where the upper limit, which is 2400 BCE, is just a few years before the mature Harappan phase. And the mature Harappan phase is the it period of the Harappan civilization, you know, where you find all those popular cool stuff, the Great Bath at Mohenjo-daro, the Great Granary at Harappa, so on and so forth. The name for the site, which is Mundigak, came from a village that was located here in 1951, when French archaeologist Jean-Marie Cassard first started surveying this area which would eventually be excavated by him over a period of seven years from 1951 to 1958. And Mundigak, as you can see in this picture, wasn't very difficult to spot considering there was a massive mound with a colonnade on top which really stood out. And as the French team started to dig, they understood the stratigraphy which is the study of layers of soil. All the layers are at the bottom and the newer ones are at the top. So the site was divided into four periods according to the stratigraphy and the assemblage. The dates for which are displayed here. So there are three sets of dates. The 2019 ones are the most recent and most reliable since they have been ascertained by more reliable techniques such as AMS data. And out of these four phases, which is Mundigak 1 to 4 that we just saw, Mundigak 1 was largely mud brick houses, while Mundigak 2 not only shows an increased number of structures or houses, but also has evidence of specialized manufacturing area. And it is in Mundigak 3 and Mundigak 4 
that the light lies, as they say. These are the it periods of Mundigak, where in Mundigak 3, we find an ossuary, which is basically a collection of human bones, in a shallow communal grave. And in Mundigak 4, we find the colonnaded structure, which is called the palace, and the priest king like head, which is very similar to the priest king in Mohenjadaro, and some excellent pottery with decorations made in black paint. This period is also fascinating because it shows signs that the city was destroyed twice and rebuilt each time and also shows evidence of the palace possibly being burnt. And this brings me to four fascinating finds at Mundigak that the archaeologists have found at Mundigak. Number one, the palace. This find is from Mundigak 4 and is called palace simply because the structure is huge, so it's palatial. Other than that, we aren't exactly sure of what exactly its function was. Now that you know that, I am going to stop doing the palace every time I say the palace. So the palace has a colonnade, battlements and a red painted doorway. It also has a decorated facade, all made out of raw mud bricks. That is, these bricks were not baked bricks, which is what the mature Harappan sites often have. Now the palace find is actually quite significant because archaeologists use this particular find along with other things such as say sophisticated pottery to conclude that Mundigak 4 in comparison to other phases of Mundigak was a proper city, likely then that it would have some form of political organization. And the next find could possibly shed some light on that, which brings me to the priest king like head, which at first glance looks so much like the priest king of Mohenjo-daro. Mohenjo-daro makes you feel mad in a little Not that. What's hijacked my video? So the head is made of limestone and has the same somber yet authoritative posture like the Indus Valley Priest King. However, the name Priest King is very misleading. We judge both the heads that we found at Mundigak and Mohinjadaro to represent the elites of the respective cities. But whether they were priests or kings, we can't really say for sure. What we can, however, say is that there seems to be some common cultural influences between the Kandahar elites, which is basically the Mundigak elites, the Kandahar area elites, and the Indus Valley elites, leading to such striking similarities in their statuettes. And the sophistication in Mundigak's head, Mundigak's Mundi, <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself, like the joke was just waiting to be made. So the sophistication in Mundigak's Mundi is matched with the sophistication in Mundigak's excellent pottery. Which brings me to the third fascinating find of Mundigak, the pottery. Now the pottery in Mundigak 4 is largely buff ware, which is light brownish, pale colored clay with black paint designs. We found bowls, vases, goblets, among other things. The goblets have some interesting designs on them, like this one with a specific kind of cattle called the Kulli cattle, a caprid goblet, where caprid is the goat family, and also people leaf goblets. The last one, which is the people leaf design, has also been found in the early layers of the Indus Valley civilization, which again points to a shared cultural belief system 
or shared cultural beliefs between Mundigak and Indus Valley, which brings us to the final segment. What really became of Mundigak? A possible answer to this question is provided in the mass burial, which has been excavated at Mundigak. Where towards the end of Mundigak 4, the palace structure shows signs of being burnt. For the first time, this Ram Kapoor reaction is on point. Archaeologists have associated this mass burial with violence, which is also something that they have found evidence of in Mundigak 3, where a communal grave of seven people has been found. Interestingly, no human remains have been found near the palace area, which is basically the area that got burnt, signaling that possibly the dead were removed to be put in a mass burial. But what about the burning? Did it finish the whole city? Not at all. In fact, only the palace area seems to have been affected. All other areas show traces of habitation post Mundigak 4. And that's because human history has been a story of human resilience. Where catastrophic collapses are slim, but gradual decline of systems and institutions are far more common. And that is all that I have for you today. Please note that there is a list of sources listed in the description box that you can go ahead and check out for a bit of extra reading on Mundiga or in case you want to fact check everything that I blabbered over here. And before you just walk away, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. And do let me know in the comments section what is it that you would like me to talk about in the next episode of Eyeshadow and Itihas.